you broke a record set by Avengers Endgame for per theater average. <laughs> Where were you when you found out? I think I was home. You know, I, I don't pay too much attention to that that stuff. I just heard, I was like, are we doing okay? What does this mean? Does this mean we're doing good? Okay, good, all right, that's, that's good. <laughs> you know, because I, I think it's hard for me to listen to all that stuff, because then if it doesn't do well, I have to listen to that as well. So it's hard for me to listen to the good without listening to the bad. So I kind of just choose to block it all out. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino came up to you and talked to you about your movie? I did, <laughs> I got to meet him. I mean, he didn't come up to me. Oh, okay. Somebody introduced us, because uh, he walked by, we were waiting for my Q&A at the bar, and uh, he walked by and I was like, is that Tarantino? You know, we're at the Arclight um, in Hollywood. He was like, yeah, I know about your movie. I was like, what? Did you just say you know about my movie? And he points at the marquee behind me where it has the farewell listed like three times because we're in three different theaters. And I was like, oh, yeah. I... And then that was the end of the introduction. What's wrong, Dad? Please tell me. My nan is dying. She doesn't know. It's surreal because I feel like we made the film separate from Hollywood, separate from Los Angeles. We went as far as we could, basically. We're in northern China, and I made a film about my family. And in a way, growing up Asian American, there's this separation between the two worlds, right? My life in the States as a filmmaker, friends, independent person, and then my life, my childhood, my family, my home, my heart. And in many ways, I've kept those two things very separate. And making this film, the process itself, was a way to bring those two worlds together. I like that you bring up kind of bridging those two worlds. I think anybody who has like some kind of dual heritage or hyphenated heritage, this is something that we can relate to. I'm curious how people have reacted to the film. I think the most common one is um, a very emotional reaction. You know, I get tagged often with uh, photos of uh, people with their own grandmothers, um, who, some of them who have passed away. I get you know, letters all the time about not understanding that their parents, why their parents did the same thing, you know? For, like, they, they, their family did the same thing to their grandparent, and in a way, they were angry all these years, and seeing the movie made them have a bit more compassion and a better understanding of the intention behind the choice. I also think it's a really bold choice to have most of it in Mandarin, and I was very proud of myself. I probably understood like 75% of it without reading the subtitle. <laughs> How much pushback did you get for making that choice? In the beginning, I got a lot of pushback because people wanted to know if it was an American film or a Chinese film, and I kept insisting I wanted to make it as an American film because the perspective that the story is told through, that of Billy's, that of me, I guess, in, in a way, um, is very American. And if you go to China and talk to producers, they'll say, well, Chinese audiences are not going to resonate with a protagonist that has such a westernized point of view, who completely objects to this decision that her family makes. Uh, but at the same time, if you say, okay, this is an American perspective, it's an American story, but it's gonna be 75% subtitled. I think just investors immediately are like, how are we gonna market that? Like, how do we explain that to an audience, you know? You're gonna to have to read, oh my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> I guess I just uh, didn't make the film with those people, because I was like, I, I can't make a film where the grandmother speaks English, because I don't know what that's like. So how does it feel to be able to say no? or to be able to say, you know what, that's not my vision. I'm gonna to go to somebody else. It's completely empowering, and I think that it's hard to quantify the value of that empowerment until you actually just feel it, and you go, oh, this is everything. Like, I can actually create from the core of my being when I create boundaries, and I know what my space is, as opposed to not having a defined space and feeling like you kind of have to mutate in order to fit in. Ah, 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 好多了, 好多了, 好多了,
<laughs> I'm Chinese, you're Chinese. What the old Chinese lady like exercise moves? Uh -huh. Do you have one? I know Nai Nai in the movie has her. I don't have an exercise move, but I will say that I've uh, taken on my mother's like pounding, oh, you know, yes. or like the mm -hmm. slapping to, mm -hmm. to cir for circulation. Um, and so sometimes in the morning, I do. I, I, I do the, the, there's this one where you like tap your face yes, to get everything. I know moving. that one. Yeah. Um, and and you know, for according to acupuncture, like this uh, muscle is all about digestion. Oh, okay. And so my mother's like, if you got gas, just hit, you know, hit hit this muscle. <laughs> I'm a fan of like the arm swing. Oh just yeah, like, yeah the that shoulder is. Really, touch. Do you know yeah. what I've gotten really into? Sometimes when I walk, I like to walk behind with my hands behind my back. <laughs> I'll walk around the park like this, you know, or down the beach. It makes me feel very, like, Confucian and, like, <laughs> like it makes me feel smart. Love it. Thank you so much for coming Thank you. by. Everybody go you. see The Farewell. Go see The Farewell. Go see The Farewell. Bring your family. I love it when people bring their parents yeah. and their grandparents. Like, I have a, my best friend from college brought her 99-year-old Italian grandmother. Yes. And she, her grandmother had not been to the movie theater in 70 years. And she went and she cried. And I, that just, ugh, it just warmed my heart.